Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is another Animal Artist Collective video. The AAC was founded to provide a platform for emerging artists, promote positive messages for animal welfare and conservation, and connect artists to their communities. The original artwork produced for the Animal Artists Collective is always made available for sale and at least 50% of the proceeds are donated to a non-profit animal conservation organization. This month, the collective focused on insects, and for my painting I honed in on a strange, strange earthling, the tree hopper. Typical tree hoppers and thorn bugs are members of the family Membracidae in the order Hemiptera, or the order of true bugs. They are most closely related to cicadas and leaf hoppers, and more distantly related to other true bugs such as shield bugs, stink bugs, assassin bugs, aphids, and thrips. Tree hoppers are characterized by a large and ornate pronotum, or helmet, which is thought to be used for camouflage. Both male and female tree hoppers look identical at first glance, so it's not a sexual dimorphism thing, um, but there is a wide variety of striking and elaborate tree hopper species. Some tree hoppers look like plant thorns or little spaceships, and some have even evolved to mimic the appearance of ants and uh, do it quite convincingly. Uh, Googling tree hopper is well worth your time, in my opinion. Uh, they're they're absolutely bizarre, they're so beautiful, um, and for the most part I had never really heard of them um, before, and I found them when I was doing a project for school about animal diversity. So they're totally stunning, I definitely recommend giving them a Google, because there are so many, so many different helmet shapes for these guys. This bug I'm painting is one that I actually got to meet in person. I found it at the Calgary Zoo here in Canada. It just happened to land on my hand, which was pretty wild, and I knew it was a tree hopper right away. Tree hoppers live on every continent except Antarctica, so it isn't too out of place that I should have encountered one this far north, but I was still really surprised. I have no idea of the genus or species of this bug. Um, I got some good macro photos with, uh, with my phone, and that's it. There's a website I turn to for local bug identification, and it doesn't have this tree hopper on there. The diversity of tree hoppers is also um, unfortunately little researched, and their systematic arrangement is unclear, or at least um, not well documented in the realm of average backyard entomology. <laughs> so this little bug doesn't get a name, um, but it's a lovely little bug, and it does get a painting. And if you want to pick up this original on Etsy, uh, it'll be up there and I'll donate half of the proceeds to insect conservation and research. I decided to do this painting in gouache, um, partly for the benefits of using gouache, which is that it layers on opaquely. I started off with a underpainting uh, that I did in watercolor. The first initial wash, which is just a really pale phthalo blue, was watercolor, and the bright orange underpainting is also watercolor, um, just because the binders in watercolor make it a little more permanent on the page. So I knew that I wanted to go for sort of a roughly blue and red-orange um, complementary color scheme. Uh, it actually ended up turning a little more primary as the video progresses, so you'll see that while I'm painting, um, but I still think it's a really nice, like, limited palette and a, a cool way to do a bug that's mostly just like a dark reddish color, like a dark neutral, um, and I just wanted to spice him up, uh, give him a little bit of extra color that wasn't necessarily there on, on the original, but could theoretically be there if we had the proper like reflected light or something like that. So like why did I do such a dramatic underpainting? Um, basically so that I have those bits of bright red orange showing through the painting. It actually makes painting faster because you're not trying to cover every little space of white um, when you're doing the details. You've already done it, so if you leave a little bit showing through, it adds to the effect of the painting. And uh, gouache also is really great for doing paintings like this where you have a dark 
um, subject with a lot of really stark highlights. So this uh, tree hopper has a hard, a hard carapace, um, the helmet here, and it's very textured. So uh, leaving all of the highlights white with watercolor would have taken forever. So gouache gives me the ability to knock out something like this um, in a much shorter time frame and uh, have a little more fun with it too, rather than um, being either really specific with leaving my whites um, uh, unpainted or being really specific with masking fluid, which sometimes is difficult to do like really small details with. So overall, I think this painting turned out really cute. It's uh, small, but it's obviously a lot bigger than the, uh, than the actual bug. <laughs> Um, but it's about four by four inches and on my Etsy store it'll be for sale framed, already framed, um, ready to go on a desk at work or on a kitchen counter or something nice like that. Uh, so make sure to check out the other AAC videos from the artists in the description below too because they'll also have their works available for purchase um, so that we can all join together and, and donate to animal conservation. I hope you enjoyed this painting process, and as always, thanks so much for watching. Bye!